In this lecture, we talk about how to use t-test for hypothesis testing. So first thing is, you go to file, open a new script. Now copy paste everything from the description of the video. So this I have copied from the description of this video. Now first look at iris. This iris is a data set already incorporated in R. So run this data set. So this is the data set which iris is. So what I'm trying to do is I'm going to take this data under petal width and with species setosa. So that is petal width data for first 50 rows. So this I'm going to take and I'm going to run a t-test on it and then we will interpret what comes out. So you have iris and then I run t-test on it, iris petal width. So I'm going to run on this column but only for species setosa. Notice that after setosa comes bursi color, we are not going to do that. So we are only going to run till 50. So let us do that. So we select these two rows and then hit the run button. And this is the test we get. So notice that first degrees of freedom is 49. So degrees of freedom 49 means that we had 50 data points and degree of freedom is n minus 1 so it gives you 49. So the default hypothesis in R is that the mean is 0. So here the alternative hypothesis is true that is the mean is not equal to 0. So this is the output of R. Now this gives us confidence interval of 0.216 to 0.275 and then you have mean of x. This is the value of t statistic. Now the only thing which we are interested here is this confidence interval. Now this confidence interval is used to test the hypothesis. So what is a hypothesis? So say hypothesis is given to you. Suppose there is petal width of 0.3. So the null hypothesis is that this 0.3 comes from this given data of species setosa. Petal width of 0.3 comes from species setosa. Now you see if 0.3 lies in this confidence interval. So 0.3 is greater than 0.275. It does not lie in this interval. So you reject the hypothesis. You say that uh, the data you have given to me 0.3 according to the t-test it does not lie in the confidence interval. Say someone again gives you data 0.19. So you see 0.19 again does not lie in the confidence interval. So you reject the hypothesis again that the petal width 0.19 comes from this data. Then someone gives you another number say 0.2. Now again 0.2 does not lie in this interval. So say someone says petal width is 0.2. You reject that hypothesis also. So if someone gives you 0.22. So 0.22 lies in this interval. And that you accept it. So the beauty of confidence interval is that you don't have to keep on formulating multiple hypotheses. You could formulate infinitely many hypotheses and keep on testing them. The confidence interval just tells you accept all hypothesis values which lie within this interval. That is if someone says petal width is 0.22 you accept that hypothesis. Someone says petal width is 0.23 you accept that hypothesis. And if someone says petal width is less than 0.21 or greater than 0.275 you reject it. So that is what uh, this confidence interval means. We al always use this t-test. Now I just want to talk about assumptions of t-test and why we use it. So the only assumption we make in the t-test is that the data is normally distributed. So the mean and the variance of the data we do not know. So when you do the t-test, if you look at the theory of the t-test, while calculating these confidence intervals, the software also calculates the mean and the variance from the given data. So the only assumption you make is that the data is normally distributed. And if you want to make a normal distribution test, then you have to assume that you know the variance. And in most of the cases, we do not know the variance and therefore we always use t-test. Now, I have given another data set, say my data. And my data is just this bunch of values. 
and then you can run t test on my data so let us run these two points now you hit the run button and again you get values so 95 percent confidence interval now is 8.4 to 9.85 now notice that 13 is within the data but it is not within the confidence interval so if someone gives you a value of 13 and asks you whether it lies in the sample you say no it does not lie in the sample although in the sample it is there but the confidence interval asks you to reject the hypothesis that the data is 13. Similarly, if someone says data is 5.2, you reject that hypothesis because your 95 confidence interval is from here to here. Now, this is very important to see these values are in the data, but all of these values are getting rejected. They are outside our confidence interval. Similarly, all these values here are getting rejected because they are outside the confidence interval so you need to keep this in mind that uh, there is a difference between sample and confidence interval so you expect your sample gives you a good idea of confidence interval but as you can see in this data your confidence interval is very different from what you have the sample here but again uh, statistics will ask you if someone says so this my data is, could be like the size of potatoes growing on my farm so someone says that you know the size of your potato is 13 what is the possibility that it grows on your farm so you say a hypothesis test it grows on my farm you reject that hypothesis because the only hypothesis you accept is from 8.4 to 9.8